Okay, America is not Babylon number 11. Is Babylon, this mystery Babylon of Revelation 17, is Babylon a city or a country? Let's look here. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet collared beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Now, we've been over this over and over again. But you see symbolic language there in this first section here, the first part of Revelation 17. And how do you know it's symbolic? Well, because he goes into describing these different symbols. All right. She is a woman. Verse 3, I saw a woman. All right. Uh, verse 1, a great whore that sitteth upon many waters. All right. So go over to verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So he defines it. Clearly, the waters are symbolic. And later he defines what that symbol is referring to. It's people. How about the woman? Verse 18. Chapter 17, verse 18. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Now notice something. That great city city. Is, can that be more than one? No. You know why? Because it's singular. It's not, well, see, back in John's day, it was Rome. But today, the city has moved and changed. See, that's what the Vatican tries to do. I've showed that in one of the other America's Not Babylon moments with the Dewey Reims thing here, the, or the Reims New Testament, written in 1582. Showed the actual, uh, you know, right from the thing, overhead camera and all that. And what they do is they say, well, see, back in John's day, it was Rome. But today, it's just kind of moved and we don't really know where it is. Then why would the Bible say right there, plain as day, that great city? Not a great city, depending on when you live or whatever. That great city. That means it's the same city that's been there and it's been there the whole time. I mean, you go back to the book of Daniel, the five kingdoms that are prophesied. The fourth merges into the fifth. You have Babylon that starts out Babylon, that's gold. Then you have the Media Persian, that's the silver. Then you have the uh, Greek, which is the brass. Then you have the legs, the iron legs. Rome, eastern, western, you know, sex of that thing. Rome. But then it goes into the iron and clay toes. So the iron doesn't go away. It stays there. See? Now, show me where in the world did America uh, have anything to do with that? And what is America? Oh, it's a city. No, America is a country. Okay? Um, it's that great city, meaning it's the same city that was in John's day. It's the same city that will be there in the time of Jacob's trouble. That great city. Could it be any plainer? And yet these agents of the Vatican, these Jesuits will come out and they'll say, well, that great city could also mean a country. Because you see, we, we can prove that Babylon, this world empire moved from Babylon to Persia, to Greece, to Rome, so we can see that Babylon is the identity or the geographic placing or whatever of it is movable. So that proves that it's moved now. This fifth kingdom has moved over time. Yes, it started in Rome in John's day, but now it's something else. No, no, no. That's here. I'm going to explain it to you why that's a lie. The kingdom itself, the gold kingdom, did not move. When that kingdom fell, then it became another place. See? The Persian kingdom. When it fell, it became Greek. The Greek, when it fell, it became Rome. But it wasn't changing places during that reign. All right? So you can't say, well, it moved from kingdom to kingdom. Yes, it did move, but it's not changing during that kingdom. You understand what I'm saying? The Roman Catholic system 
started out as Rome, political, secular Rome, and then it became pagan Rome of the Roman Catholic system. That's why you have the iron legs merging into the iron and clay toes. It's that great city. It's as plain as day, folks. How can you take that and make it into a country? The only way that you can do that is if you are an agent of Rome and trying to cover up for your master.